bullets. Um, and as soon as like he catches a couple of things in advantage, he can kind of blow you up for it. He's gonna whiff a couple of ass fashes, but all he needs is just one, uh, and he'll be able to Three, clean up the stuff. Two, one, yeah, Coltman go! on the other side, who had uh, previously upset the number one seed of this bracket, that being uh, Quivin, who may have a Luigi in his back pocket. It is currently unknown, but he's been going all snake this bracket, and it's looked pretty good thus far, but... Oh my you know, goodness. Yeah. And that's it. That's Ugedi the first off within the first 20 seconds of the match. Amarillo's Ugedi cleans it up right off the top. I don't even know what to say about that. Coleman went high twice. That's like that's like the biggest thing you gotta always remember about like fighting Bayonetta. You just have to remember, hey, if you're going high, same thing goes for uh, fighting Ness. You know, you could just kind of lose your stock uh, all the way off the top. Yeah, normally it's really good as he gets a very, very clutch sticky if he gets the chance to detonate it this high, but it transferred. No, it fell off. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, Amaril is really pushing their aggressive, uh, their aggression. Bayonetta, one of the few characters that can really chase you wherever you are on this screen. So Snake can never be safe unless his boots are on the ground. Yeah, it's it's she just has like a really like big relative effect. You always have to like imagine like a huge bubble around her because uh, she gets things pretty quick. Uh, but that being said, that up tilt gonna be able to scoop up Amaryllis. I believe Amaryllis was looking through the back end, was not able to find it though. Which timing beautifully finds that F smash, and just like that, Amaryllis really strong stock lead right now. Uh, all they need to do is just hold on to this, run away with it, and punish Coltman. Um, you know, Coltman has a lot of work to do here. Yeah, Coltman have Coltman forcing to limit the amount of trades he can take automatically limits the amount of grenades he can pull, which is really the X factor in this matchup. He has to pull one there, but percent is going to stack up and not in his favor super quickly. Oh man, they, those dive kicks are so safe. Ooh, uh... I really like the fact that Coltman like recognized, you know, they couldn't get through the time with any other ledge traps. They just went through the Nikita, wasn't able to find it. But Amarillis once again, but this time that Fulido is not going to be able to kill quite yet. Not close enough to the top. Oh, wow, might. just calling out <laughs> Coltman over and over. Just, yep. just pulling those grenades on those plats. That's something that you always have to be what cognizant of. Baby? You can't be too comfortable against Bayonetta when you're above her, when you're just like on those diagonals, you know, you'll get you'll get scooped up. Just look at that, right? Over commits to, uh, you know, whatever Coltman was like trying to set up on the platform. And, he, overcom uh, he overcommitted to pulling a grenade. Yes. Like you would never think that's a commitment, but that's the power of ABK in like every matchup. You gotta like, play even on the ground. Yeah, you gotta, even, you gotta play on the ground and wait. Yeah, like even prior, uh, he the first combo that he did on that final stock didn't kill, but it brought him up high. Um, that was just Coltman jumping. And it's like, it's little things like that that Bayonetta can really make you explode for. So, like, playing against, playing against Bayonetta is a, it's a different matchup that you have to almost treat like you're playing against a Shoto. Like, you can't get, you can't let Shotos get close enough to, to run up and down to and do, hit all of their, hit all their buttons, cancel into all their specials. Bayonetta, you can't, you can't be in ABK range or else you have to be very prepared with your SDI. Yeah, absolutely. You have to always just be so mindful of like the very specific spaces against Banner that you don't want to be. You want to be playing out of shield a lot. You want to be playing grounded a lot. Tries to go. Ooh, they had the right idea, but Banner was still able to just tech roll away so far. Uh, this and there we go. Now we see why this could become so difficult. Coleman just being able to press uh, neutral B out of disadvantage. And, you know, Banner struggles. She genuinely suffers. Yeah, but at the same time, like, it's really up to Snake to make use of his raw kill power, because percent differential will almost always be in Bayonetta's favor, especially in this matchup. Looking for the Rising Downer once again, that move, good, but not not especially safe on the full rise. Romerilis can find that out and call it out. That might be a source of a stock, as the grenade that was thrown up there blowing up but managing wow. that stock. That's quite a way to take the stop. But right now, I love that feeling, but it's just to be able to reposition themselves and still be able to win punish. Just really good use of the kit uh, and some of the game's mechanics. Right now, Amarillo is trying to look for uh, an ABK, perhaps, you know, try to get a kill out of it. Ooh. I'm not really sure what they're looking for with that one. Uh, maybe Miss Input and F Smash got that F token set. By the way, they just need to find a way to clean up the stock at this point. Um, and there, there we go. We Back in. The explosion putting him right in the spot of the Halo platform. 
Coltman making sure to take advantage of every advantage every situation he can find himself in. That's kind of how snake the snake cookie crumbles. Like scramble situations are a plenty, and while Bayonetta has great tools for him, they're not frame one. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And just like that, I don't even know what aerial that was. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a back air. That frame back seven, air. baby. <laughs> yeah. I really wasn't expecting that one to come out that quickly and kill like that, but you know what? We ball who we are. I have to say, though, I really like some of the adjustments that Coltman has made um, in the way that they space themselves relative to Bayonetta, the, the way that they're standing to, like, the far sides of the platform, uh, making sure that they can't get called out by ABK, making sure they're always just outside of Bayonetta's burst range, uh, and as a result, they're just getting hit in neutral a whole lot less. That time, though, Amarillo's catching the jump. No punish on that quite yet. And getting back against Nikita is always a struggle. Ooh. Kevin, oh no. Amarillo's held down and just fast fell. Ah, oh, tragic. That was... Like fast fall hold shield, perhaps? Looking to block this Nikita that was ever so dangerously looming. Just holding down. That's nice. it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, probably they just wanted to just hold down and then release it and snap onto the ledge. It happens to the best of us. That up tilt was genuinely ridiculous. It was maybe one of my favorite ways I've seen Snake take a stock. <laughs> just kicks you right into, kicks you right into the sky. Up tilt in a dream. Like Snake's looking for all of these. Like, there's a reason that Snake has so many ways that you can play and utilize his kit. You can be a much more of like a set play kind of snake, like Looney, as we have in chat, uh, bringing, bringing the brawl mentality back into ultimate QC kind of snake, uh, like, you know, like we see how Sensei plays, uh, or you lean back into Snake's projectiles and into his tools and use him as a very much trade bait and exploit the fact that Snake is so heavy. Uh, and can survive at a high percent for a super long time, which mm -hmm. kind of angles into Bayonetta's exact weakness. Like once you get in, once you get you done your your flashy long combo, if that doesn't end in a stock, Bayonetta is looking for a raw back air and a and a prayer. Yeah, like once again, like you know, uh, so as long as you're smart about the way that you're covering against Bayonetta, she needs a hard beat to get a stock. Or unless you're just kind of throwing out a bunch of attacks, you know, which time, you know, you're dead. But at the end of the day, it's going to be an F-Smash. It's going to be a back air. Um, and so as long as you're playing outside of Bayonetta's range, you're not throwing out unnecessary projectiles that she can't witch time and use against you. You kind of just, you know, you're going to be coasting by just fine. Uh, Coltman was doing a much better job of avoiding kills. We definitely saw that with the first stock. Uh, the survivability was definitely there. Also, they cleaned up the SDI a little bit. You know, Amaryllis was definitely not getting as much off of Upbeat, um, you know, as he was before. But then, here we see the Robin going into game three. Um, you know, definitely recommend the character switch here as well. Uh, at the end of the day, I do think th that's a matchup that a lot of Bayonetta's complain about, I think. Right? I, is, is I, it I one believe of those? so. I believe so. I know Connor complains about it, but also Connor, aka Stan Luna, complains about a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, but here we are, Town City for game number three. Uh, seeing the switch to Robin, um, you know, it, it's an interesting choice. You know, the way that at, at least Amarillo's plays Robin gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> he really went for that. Why? <laughs> I mean, he's alive. Oh no! It just, he just didn't. It was so unnecessary. But I've never been more scared of someone's raw energy before. <laughs> oh wow! And that down smash in this matchup is just particularly menacing. It can extend off of the cipher, you know, uh, just like to get you even easier sometimes maybe. So Coleman has to be so careful about the way that they're air dodging. But unfortunately, Levin just just gone. Uh, when when Amarillis needed it most. It gets yeah, the, there it's back. Uh, I was about to say PK fire, but the arc fire into the guard back here. Amarillo is cleaning up the stock right now. Just sort of waiting a little bit on ledge, trying to see if Coltman's gonna whiff a button. Coltman right now definitely struggling a little bit more. Uh, you know, needs some time just to readjust themselves to a completely different character, different playstyle. Yeah, and just getting counter zoned too. Uh, arc fire can be such a hassle to deal with it, for any character, but in this matchup, it can be it can function very wall like as w as do all of uh, Robin's individual tones and the Levin Sword itself when discarded. Like just being able to block the onslaught that Snake is throwing at you. Like forces him to overcommit to things like dash attack while extremely good in a cross stage burst option. 
play. It's when you're playing a character like Robin, who's always in a, putting themselves in a reactable range, like suddenly things become can become a lot more dangerous. Mm -hmm. We know Coleman getting off the ledge, getting off the ledge against uh, Robin. Definitely much easier said than done, but catching the jump once again with that up tilt. Coltman cleaning up the stock. Uh, Snake can make up damage really, really quickly. So that's not going to be like too much of a problem for him. Just like the biggest thing is, you know, you always want to be on the lookout for uh, fire. You see it coming out, you can react to it. You can dash in, get in there. But Amaryllis, wow, what a fantastic upper. Yeah, gotta punish, gotta punish Snake. Like, disadvantage mm -hmm. is, like, Snake is a swingy character by nature, so. Man, he's been going for these foreigners like it's another one. <laughs> he's really he's killing it out here. I don't know what he's looking for with a, with a boy to punish me, but that is one of the only times I have ever seen that move fully connected to itself. It always, it always just like doesn't want to work at like the last possible second too. Uh, but right now, Amarillo is early dodging right to the platform. Remember what I said about Snake making up damage and stocks really quickly? Ooh, that could have been, that could have been bad. That could have no been terrifying. From, great no yeah. jump from Coleman. I think that poke might have been like just enough to put him into the blast zone too. But right now, Amarillo is just barely whiffing that grab. Uh, he had it. He was spaced correctly. Not really sure why he didn't end up getting it. You know, why Snake's f poke just ended up kind of going through it. Man, I'm just like, I'm just blown back by the amount of just raw options that Coltman is throwing out. He's really turned up the dial. If you if you consider <gasps> if you can consider aggression like a dial, as we said, the oh up smash and up covering the air dodge. He went from like a five or a four against Bayonetta, playing really cautious, not trying to overcommit too much, really taking the trades as they come. To oh, you're playing Robin. Time to turn it up a bit and counter and break through the counter oh zoning you're trying to do. So, there's a couple of things that could have just happened with that last stop. On one hand, it could have been a fantastic call out. Coltman saw Amarillis just like air dodging to platforms, you know, trying to be tricky with it and said, okay, well, I'm just gonna input the same option multiple times uh, consecutively. And you know what? If one of them connects, one of them connects, you know? Robin can't fall that quickly on you. He's safe from that distance. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it's also possible that might have been like a, like, what, what, what happened here? What, what's going on? Yeah, wow, Emily Ellis just burned all the resources and maybe they just didn't anticipate uh, the up smash, like, being out for so long. Maybe they thought it would hit the platform a little bit earlier. Yeah, I think, I, 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 don't, I don't know this for certain, but I think if you don't charge the up smash, it doesn't hit top plat. But with that little bit of charge, it covered exactly where Amarillis wanted to land. Does the arc and trajectory of it change? Yeah, it goes higher. I didn't even know that was a thing. That's yeah. uh, that's kind of cool. That's why, uh, like, if, if Snake has a lot of time, and on a stage not like Town and City with this top platform here, he'll charge multiple, he'll plant an up smash, charge it, then plant an up, another up smash and not charge it to two land on ledge back to back. I didn't even know that. So, you know, I'm really happy that you told me. That's that's uh, yep. that's gonna be something for me to think about. That's kind of cool, of actually. Of course, it doesn't really go on against Ness because he can absorb all of those, but, you know, he... for every other character. Yeah, you just get to sometimes Ready? cheat in some matchups. You ever, <laughs> you ever have like a matchup where you get to cheat, or like your character just intrinsically breaks down the other character on like a fundamental level. But that being said, right now, Amarillo is like, they had all of the momentum uh, in the previous game, you know? And then Coleman able to make up the damage so quickly, able to clean up the stock with a neutral like that. Uh, that was definitely something, you know? Yeah, it's like, it's really about changing your, it's changing the amount of aggression you put on at any one moment. Because Robin, while they have insane conversions, most of the time they're playing at you from from mid screen, from half screen. Yeah. Like they're really trying to make sure that they have all of their items on deck, and they're approaching when they know they can because they have the tools to to get in and get out, like a tactician. Haha. <laughs> Snake, on the meantime, he can exploit a lot of characters in a lot of really interesting ways. His weight, his frame data, his up, up close and afar. So by changing how he approaches every interaction and not just every matchup, Coltman can find openings at really, really opportune times. Mm -hmm. 
And just though, you know, Coltman spacing themselves really nicely, just waiting for them. Like, let's press these buttons. How did that up smash connect? It's big. That was so far. That was, that was, that was massive. Oh my goodness. I, I thought it was gonna be like an up or something. Nope. Just, just an up smash. We're still able to get it right now. Amarillo's holding down the center stage so beautifully. Uh, really, really strong back here though, and just continues to hold it down. Like, like Coltman just can't get out of this corner. They can't pull any grenades. They just, they just, they, they want to get back. But uh, Amarillo's was just not letting him. No jump. But Elwin fast enough to get past the Nikita after getting struck by that. Uh, I believe it was L Thunder. And Colton's looking for something. Okay, wow. okay. It, it worked out, it worked out. Mm -hmm. Like, like with the amount of times that Emily was, is like getting his uh, landings called out by that uh, up tilt. Uh, you know, just gotta be a little bit more careful about the way that you are jumping in on Snake. You know, sometimes you just want to like short hop and then short, uh, double jump back to bait it. You know. Uh, that being said, Amarillo's able to still take that stock. Right now, this is a really, really good lead for them. Kind of looking like game one a little bit. Uh, so all they need to do at this point is just hold on to this really, really strong and they'll be able to run away from it, with it. Yeah, incredible recognition on Amarillo's part. Making sure to wait a little bit on ledge before picking an option. Like, wants to see what Coltman ends up doing and make sure, making sure Coltman puts himself in the, in the animation of a move before he ends up picking his ledge option. That's really what prolonged a lot of stocks and what harmed him on Town and City with those small side blast zones. Just a little bit of impatience when trying to get back to center stage. Yeah, that that weakness or that uh, that opening seems to have been closed up tight, and he's got a whole stock lead because of it. Right now, Phyllis was just trying to cover so much. How did that up tilt? How did that up tilt not? Get beat out by that back here. Wow, that is so unfortunate that the hitbox like didn't go low enough. That was a really beautifully spaced L Thunder. This is Amarillo's stock to take. He doesn't actually go through the follow up from the Arc Fire. Uh, not confident that it was even going to connect. But there it is. Arc Fire into Florida with the JV2. Really, really clean. Uh, really clean game from Amarillo's. You know, he saw some of the mistakes that he made last game. I think his ledge trapping was so much more solid. The way that he held down center stage was immaculate. Was able to pile on so much more damage. Uh, and Coltman was just like, at many times, just struggling to play the game, struggling to get back on, struggling to play his neutral. Um, and and Amarillo's ran away with it. Yeah, and I really wanted to, as I slowed down that replay right there to show like his, his recovery idea was solid. The first, the going high, really good. But then this second, the second beer risk, it speeded up a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Like, all that option the, coverage the from Emily just first, like chase them. The first them. B reverse he does up here, good. The second one, right what? into right into Amarosa's palm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen, man. It feels it feels good. You know, it, it feels good to move around. Like I'm going this way. Well, I'm going the other direction. You know, so, sometimes you press for the sake of pressing. Uh, but Emerald was definitely like positioned uh, in order to be able to punish that. But now we're in game number five. This is the definitive one. No jump at all. Oh my God! Just like a slight like uh, you know mistiming there, and it could have just gone so so poorly. But Emerald is still able to find his way off of the ledge right now, holding down center stage once again. This is definitely his ledge trap to take. But that grenade from Coltman coming in so clutch. That grenade is the reason why he is here to stay was almost able to convert off of that secondary explosion too. Oh, perfect parry in order to get himself back situated, back established into the center stage. Amarillo's just seems to have the right tool for the job whenever whenever we get to one of these scramble situations, whether it be the Thunder family, but the roll in for ready and waiting into Coltman's loving legs <laughs> up till and a dream. It's, it's always gonna be there. Yeah, absolutely. Amarillo's just needs to find a way to take the stock that fairly not gonna be able to take it quite yet. You know, Snake is as heavy as he is. That was a beautifully spaced arc fire, but unfortunately Amarillo's not anticipating it to connect. They backed off a little bit after they shot it. Was not able to get there in time. Doesn't have the burst, doesn't have the speed to do so. Uh, the next hit from Amarillo's would most definitely take it. <gasps> Wait, you know, the ability to adjust the angle on that L when coming in super clutches, he armors right through the thunder, but... <laughs> wow. That's tough. He just gotta hold that. By the way, Amarillo still manages to find the stock. 
uh, you know, they get put on damage really, really quickly. They get, you know, one falling foil, they get one falling up out. Um, you know, an Alk file, and that can just be obscene amounts of percent to Goblin is definitely no Shuenju to low percent uh, combos like that. And that's exactly what he's looking for. That Alk file on shield is such a dangerous position to be in. Uh, you can go through so many mix-ups. You can go through grabs, you can go through command grab. You can try to hit them if you're anticipating a goal. Uh, yeah, scary stuff with Coltman. Yeah, being able to put uh, pin down an opponent that likes to move as much as Coltman, make them hold one of those mix-ups, very, very solid. Oh, man. <laughs> L, the Levin Sword coming back just in time. All right, all right, good awareness. Trying to stay to Robin's back, making sure that... Uh... Making sure that he's at the very least as safe as possible despite rising down air, having a pretty solid punish window. And this uh, was... so, yeah. so I was gonna say like that was some like really cool movement from Coltman just to be able to like drop the grenade downwards and still be able to like stay on the top platform. Either way, hanging on to the ledge a little bit too long. Last stock, game number five. Um Wow, I don't, I don't really know what to say here right now. Both of them are just kinda of scrapping. Yeah, in, a, in ways that you wouldn't expect, given the, uh, given how Robin is much more, is m known as both either a sortie or a zoner, they really try and keep you out of mid range. But Amaryllis is taking every opening that they can in order to bully the snake and put him in disadvantage, try and get as much damage, and not have to worry about a snake's damage output retaking that lead. Just really hold, pedal to the metal, holding onto the gas. Wave and I've got to say, I really like the way that Coltman is using the crouch. They're using it like in such a way that they're making Amaryllis really, really uncomfortable uh, with going through like a lot of thunders and L thunders and neutral. But that being said, Amaryllis just put on so much damage, landing with back pretty really safely on shield, caught it. Wow, that's a, that's a really clean last arc uh, for Amaryllis. He was just able to put on the damage. Um, arc fire, like, like again, Robin hits you with an arc fire, uh, you pray to God. You pray to God that either, you know, one of the funny swords spins away, you pray to God that, you know, they mess something up, uh, because otherwise, you know, you're eating 50. Easy. Keep in mind, though, that that wasn't an arc fire that triggered it off of, and what part of what led Amaryllis to that game win is the awareness to not just combo off of his own stuff, whether it be arc fires, L thunders, arc thunders, all of that good stuff. No, he had the awareness to continue, continually combo off Coltman's own grenades. Just really very spatially aware and using Robin's very good, well, not, not so good ground speed, but very good airspeed to get to where Snake is at. Absolutely. I'm, I'm still like a little, I'm still like a little bit shook from, um, goodness, what's it called? The Thoron, uh, from before. <laughs> you know, I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't believe that happened. But thank you so much to Munio Saifi for the sub. I hope you're having a lovely day, friend. I hope everything is good with you. Um, yeah. And that means, uh, we'll be seeing Emma Lillis in Winner's Finals, uh, on the other side of, uh, Winner's Semis. We have Zane up against John Numbers. And guys, once again, you all are watching.